Hi, welcome back to the Surf Trainers uh, series where we do little podcasts supported by video on subjects on surfing. We're not going to take on the common uh, tutorial um, subjects, but we're more going to go into sort of like a you learning how to self-coach your surfing uh, type of an approach. Um, So yeah, the whole idea of it today, for example, we're going to talk about... um, using the wave to your advantage, going up the wave, using breaking sections like floaters or foam climbs uh, to your advantage and take a few things from what we're going to talk about um, and implement it in the water. Um, Taking all the information that you get from a tutorial or a podcast can sometimes be a bit too much. So I would say if you get one or two things that you can really specifically train in the water from this podcast, um, it is a success. Like I said, we're going to talk about um, mostly choosing a higher road on the wave. If there's a braking section in front of you, many surfers decide to go down and around that section. If you find yourself in this situation a lot, it is definitely a huge progression session. If you manage to not go down the wave and around, but you can manage to bring yourself up onto that breaking part of the wave and either float it or do a little foam climb or whatever. Why is this good? You're gonna feel that as you're going down the wave and trying to make it around that section, you're gonna lose a lot of speed and you might not even make it. Going up the wave and floating that section is not only just gonna look a lot cooler, but also it's gonna um, generate a lot of speed as you're going down the wave again. So continuing uh, that wave, you're going to have speed um, and you're going to be looking cool. So that's a huge win. So let's talk about some focus points that you can be focusing on in the water. And let's start from the beginning. Okay, so maybe now you're at that stage where you take off on the wave and then when there's a braking section in front of you, you go down the wave and you, you just try to surf around it we're first going to focus on changing your mindset having the mindset of seeing that breaking part and immediately reacting to doing a bottom turn up or at least driving up the wave face so that you're high up the wave is going to set you up for a floater or whatever you want to do there so staying high or at least um, noticing the braking section and going up the wave face is the start So that's something you can start with. If you're a beginner in this, just make sure you're a bit higher up that wave when you see this breaking part arriving. At this point, you can imagine we're sort of not on top of the wave, but we're high up the wave. And now we want to get our board on top of the wave and float there or do a foam climb there. So what's important here? First of all, for everybody that is new to this, focus on your arms. Okay. You want to definitely throw your arms up because you want to go up that wave face. Arms is really important. And then one thing that is also really important and that's combined with throwing your arms is compression and extension. And that's maybe a bit more advanced. And now I'm going to talk about compression and extension and it might be a bit complicated, but it really isn't. So imagine, right? You're not totally on top of the braking section just yet. But you are compressed, so you're in a compressed stance. You're going to extend yourself while throwing your arms up. And this is actually, yeah, basically you're just jumping up that wave. Literally, when surfing also, this compression and extension, imagine you see also in the screen right here, a video from the, the Guinness World uh, Book of Records from the highest jump or something in this, in this scenario. And what we see is the dude, he's compressing because he wants to jump high that's i mean we all understand that and then he jumps he extends he throws his arms in the air and then he compresses again to get on top of that thing and stay there yeah so it's compressed extend throw the arms and compress again and when you see it like that it really isn't that complicated we're doing the same thing on a surfboard so you are compressed on your board you're going to extend off your back foot a little bit to bring the nose of the board up the wave you're throwing your arms in the air as well because you want to jump up that wave 
And then as you're getting on top of the wave, you're going to compress again so that you're in a nice compressed stance and floating on top of that section. So I hope you understand how simple the compression extension actually is. And this is something like, for example, if you're going to play basketball and you want to dunk the basketball, you're going to compress and extend. But in surfing, a lot of, a lot of surfers tend to forget that it's the same, um, the same forces that come to play in, in, on a wave when you're surfing. So now we're on top of that wave, sort of the second part. We're on top of that wave. How do we get back down the wave? We got to rotate back towards the beach. And this rotation, depending on when you do it, is how long you're going to stay on that wave phase. So for example, if you're going to do a float section, yeah, you're going to go up and you don't necessarily want to rotate back immediately because you want to stay up that wave a bit, travel some distance. Where if you're doing a faster sort of foam climb turn type of a thing, you're going to go up and immediately rotate back. It's really important. Obviously, you're using your eyes. But this is things you can find in common tutorials. One thing for you is just um, as a point. So now maybe um, you do get on top of that wave every time. You've been drilling this for yourself. Now you want to start focusing on how do you do your rotation. Check out some tutorials. Check it out. Um, do I look is something you can always ask yourself after surfing. You're pedaling back to the lineup. Hey, did I actually use my eyes? Did I look where I was going or did I not? So landing the turn can be difficult for some uh, surfers because sometimes, you know, a wave is one and a half meters high. You're falling down one and a half meters with your board and then you got to land it. So it's really not that complicated, but just try to land it going to compression as you are landing with your chest over your front foot. And by compressing, it's the same thing, right? If you're going to jump off a one meter um, um, sidewalk, whatever, um, and by the landing, you're going to compress. So on the surfboard, it's again the same thing. Now, for you to self-coach this, this, this bit, um, just don't try to do everything at the same time. Try to, for example, first check out, okay, up the wave phase. Then you're going to check, how do I get on top of that wave? Now you know, okay, I got to throw my arms. I got to extend a bit. Am I doing that while you're pedaling back? Did I throw? Did my hands go above my head or not? So just actively thinking uh, and reflecting on your waves is going to help you a lot. And it's going to make your progression really fast. And then one more thing that I would suggest um, and recommend to everybody, something I do myself as well as journal your experiences. So for example, you're coming back from your surf session, things I did right, things I did maybe wrong, um, things, how, how am I better the next day? You can ask these questions and there will be answers popping up in your head that are gonna help you progress next session. I hope you learned something today and check out some tutorials on technique so you can practice this nicely in the water. Success. This podcast is brought to you by Nordsey Surf Trainer. For more awesome content, sign up for the Surf Trainer's email. The link is in the bio or check out social media platforms. Enjoy.